Hi, I'm Jim from the Jim Handy Channel, and you are watching the very first video of this channel. And you've probably arrived here because you've been doing some searching out on YouTube related to anode rods for water heaters, whether or not you should replace them, or how do you replace them, what's the consequences if you don't replace them. So what I am going to show you today are the consequences of if you don't replace an anode rod in your water heater under certain circumstances, how fast that they can actually degrade and become useless. And in my case, at least, what I believe the primary cause was of a very shortened life of the anode rod in a recent water heater that I actually had to replace. So we're going to start out, and I did recently replace my water heater. I have a 38-gallon ream uh, water heater. I'll put a picture of exactly what that looks like up right now. And this is literally my third water heater that I have put in in about nine years. And <laughs> I think I finally learned my lesson uh, this last time. The issue is when I moved into this home, there was a water heater already in place that was about 16 years old. And I said, you know, that's probably living on borrowed time. I'm going to be proactive. I'm going to have a plumber come in, install a water heater. We just moved into the home. I also wanted to install a water softener at the same time. We'll come back to that because that's a very important piece of this uh, uh, story here. And all was well. Everything was working great. And not quite five years went by and the water heater started leaking. It developed a tank leak toward the lower bottom part of it. So off I go to Home Depot. I bought a Ream 38-gallon replacement, brought it home, put it in. Everything worked fine. And that lasted for a little less than five years. This time, I decided that I would look into it a little bit more, maybe go off and look at YouTube, look at some videos, try to understand why my water heater wasn't lasting more than five years. And I believe it all comes down in terms of the accelerated uh, or shortened lifespan of my water heater. It comes down to two things. One, the fact that I have a water softener installed and the byproducts of that, which is a higher sodium content, I think, at least based on what I've researched. You can correct me if you like, add comments or whatever. Um, the other thing is I've never replaced the anode rod um, I was occasionally um, flushing my water heater, this last one that I had uh, had installed that went bad, uh, but that wasn't enough. So just to, uh, so that's a little bit of the background. And just to give you a sense uh, in terms of the anode rod that came with this most recent water heater that I installed, this is what it looks like. It's about 24 inches end to end. It's made of aluminum. And one of the things that you'll see here, right in the center, if you look, you'll see a, a small round circle. That is an inner rod. I'm assuming it's made of steel or something of that sort. And of course, the rest of it is the aluminum part, which is the sacrificial part of the uh, anode rod. Um, a lot. Of, what I have seen online says you should probably replace these every year or two. Uh, in my case, I'm, um, I was thinking, okay, I'll probably do it about every year, but I actually came up with a different solution, which is probably why you're wondering, where did I come up with this anode rod? This is the actual anode rod that came with the water heater that I recently installed. I put something else in its place, which I'll mention in a moment. Now, here's the shocker. The old water heater that I just pulled out that went bad, which developed the tank leak, this is the anode rod. I managed to actually get it out of the water here. And if you're interested in how you replace an anode rod, I'll put a link in the uh, description. I'm not going to go into that. There's some really good videos out there. So look in the description. You'll see a link for uh, what I think is a really good video that walks you through replacing an anode rod. But as you'll see, the aluminum, and this is less than five years old, all that's left is that center core, just like I showed you here. If you look at the very center of that, that's all that's left. 
And when you look at the comparison between the two, you can see the difference. It's, uh, I was stunned. I was absolutely shocked. Now, as to why my anode rod went bad so quickly or why my water heater failed so quickly, obviously with this serving as my anode rod that had no protection against corrosion, so it went after the uh, interior of the tank and subsequently had the leak, and that's what led to the premature failure of my water heater. But I honestly believe that it is the water softener that uh, accelerated the failure of my water heater. Um, I've read things and I've even seen some videos that, especially from the water softener companies, uh, and again, you can comment. If anybody knows something different or has an opinion on this, please put it in the comments. But that byproduct of sodium that is created and put into the water, I think accelerates the corrosion of that anode rod. And in my case, it corroded very quickly and once gone, uh, I had no protection. Uh, it's a hard lesson learned. Uh, thankfully, I could replace the water heater on my own. So I didn't have the extra expense of a plumber. It ended up costing me under 500 bucks uh, for the water heater. If I'd had that replaced by a plumber, it would have probably been on the order of 14 to $1,500 counting labor and everything. So that is a little bit of uh, a cautionary tale about anode rods in your water heater, um, about replacing them. And especially if you have a, wa a water softener that is in your water system, uh, I think that you especially need to be paying very careful attention to the replacement schedule of your anode rod. Otherwise, you'll probably experience the same thing that I've experienced. I'll show you what my setup looks like now. I've got the new water heater installed. It's all good. And I'll show you the type of water softener that I have, uh, which is a Pentair brand uh, water softener. It's a very good brand of water softener. Uh, and I'll also show you the um, what I put in place of this standard anode rod uh, as to serve as my anode rod to give some extra protection uh, and to hopefully save me the trouble of having to go in and replace this every year. All right, so here's my water heater, and you'll see the anode rod with the wire connecting to the very top of it. That's the electro electric anode rod. Uh, it's titanium, and it plugs into the wall. That's that green light. That green light's telling me that it is it, uh, operational. Uh, so that, that indicator there, so that you know that it's actually doing what it's supposed to do. Here you'll see my water softener. All the water runs through this before it hits any kind of an appliance or faucet or anything else in the house. Typical uh, setup uh, that we have here. So that's my setup. Again, I just wanted to point out the um, mainly the electric anode rod. So after some research online, what I came up with was this. And it is the Coral Protect. It's an electric anode rod. Uh, it's pretty short. It's only about a foot long. It goes in place of the standard anode rod. And again, I've added a link into the description and I'll show it now on the screen as well as a picture of what this anode rod looks like because it's already installed in my water heater. But um, this is supposed to do two things. One, give you about 20 years of corrosion protection as well as remove odors uh, from your water. I don't have the issue with odor. I guess some folks might, especially if you're using well water perhaps or something of that nature. Uh, but this is the brand. Uh, everything that I researched, researched on this uh, suggested that it was a really good option and uh, would take some of the concern away about premature failure of uh, water heaters due to a uh, accelerated corrosion on the anode rod. So uh, again, um, you can see from the picture that I'm showing you right now what that looks like. Uh, if you're interested in installing those, they're super, super easy to install. You do have to have a power outlet because there is a electrical lead that runs from the top of your anode rod over into a little adapter that needs to plug into the wall. So that is my story of premature failures of water heaters. Um, the cautionary tale about anode rods and 
generally the need to replace them every one to two years, or as an alternative, go with a different type like I've done. And of course, the uh, water softeners uh, and the impact that they can have on the uh, integrity of your water heater and the lifespan of your water heater. Hope that helps. If it did, give me a like, uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be posting all sorts of things. Again, this is my first video. Uh, I'm going to get into all sorts of things as this channel moves forward. Uh, hopefully there will be something of interest to uh, everyone. And, um, and we'll just keep at it. Have a great day.